Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Muhammad Mazharul Islam, Associate Professor of Community Medicine, Boshundhara Addin Medical College. Today we shall discuss about biostatistics, and this is the first part and preliminary part of this lecture series. Today we shall learn about data and variables. First of all, let us see what is statistics. Statistics may be defined as a science that deals with systematic collection, processing, analysis and interpretation of data from which an inference may be drawn. And biostatistics is a special branch of statistics that deals with data pertaining to biological science. So, biostatistics works in data field it is all about data handling. Functions of biostatistics are data collection, processing, analysis, interpretation and drawing up of inferences. This is a picture of microscope. We use this instrument to see very small or tiny materials. On the other hand, biostatistics is used to see or understand any, any very large set of data. Look at this image. This is an image of raw data from which we can find very minimum information. But look at this. This is a summarized data of the previous data set it shows the total number of students, average body, body weight of them and weight range. So, this is very easy to understand for the reader. Let us see what are the uses of biostatistics. Collection of information, simplification of huge and complex set of data, elucidation of ideas, formulation of hypothesis identification of health problems, health resources and health service utilization, measurement of association between two or more variables, prediction and forecasting, a disease magnitude, designing a research or study, planning, management, monitoring and evaluation of health services or health related programs. Now, let us see what is data? Data is a set of values recorded against one or more observational unit. For example, a person is my observational unit and his weight is 40 kg. So, 40 kg is a data. Let us see what are the types of data. There are two types of data according to nature of data. These are qualitative data and quantitative data. Qualitative data are actually categorical data like religion, occupation, sex, etcetera. On the other hand, quantitative data are numerals or numerical information like age in years, height in centimeter, weight in kg etcetera. We can classify data into another two groups by on the basis of processing. These are grouped data and ungrouped data. Group data are class interval data like 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15 etcetera. On the other hand, ungrouped data are literally ungrouped like 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 11 etcetera. Now, let us see what are the sources of data from which we can collect or get data. There are three sources, primary source, secondary source and tertiary source. Primary source is freshly collected data. We can collect data by study, by survey, by surveillance, by observation etcetera. Secondary data are already collected data that are already collected by some other person and we use the data from that person. It may be from hospital records, 
from statistical records, etc. And tertiary data are the data that are already collected and published in books or journals. Now, let us see methods of data collection. Uh, we can collect data by interview, interview may be face to face interview, interview may be in depth interview, may be over phone interview, etcetera. We can collect data by observation, observation may be participatory observation in which a data collector participates in the process and another is non participatory observation in which a data collector does not participate in the process. Third one is focused grouped discussion or FD, FGD. We can collect data from a focus group discussion in which uh, some people sits in a room and discusses and a data collector collects his information from the discussion. Another one is case study, document review, administering of written questionnaire, survey, experiments, etcetera. Now, let us discuss about tools or instruments by which we can collect data. Tools or instruments are the means or materials by which we collect information or data. Tool is a broader term, it contains both instruments and uh, others. And instruments may be questionnaire, may be checklist, may be forms or modules. And we need some other tools like paper, pen, smartphone, sphygmomanometer, measuring tape, weighing machine, etcetera, to collect data. Let us see what is form. A form is a piece of paper in which only points for recording particulars of information are printed and modules are questions with step by step instructions on it and checklist is a set in which an observer puts tick marks to collect data. Now, let us discuss about questionnaire questionnaire is a set of questions. So, there are some types of questionnaire like structured questionnaire and unstructured questionnaire. Structured questionnaire is one in which all possible answers are listed alongside the questions. On the other hand, unstructured questionnaire is a questionnaire in which blank space is provided for writing answer no answer is given there. Questionnaire may be interviewer administered, may be self administered. Let us see what are the types of questions. Questions may be open ended and closed ended. An open ended question, there are options or answers not given. Respondents have to answer in her or his own way. Usually, respondents do not like to answer an open ended question. They feel that they are taking exams. It gives multiple responses which makes statistical analysis difficult. Here is an example of open ended question. Please answer the following question give your opinion on the issue of salt iodization law. What is its advantage and what are its disadvantages? Here no answer is given, only blank space is provided to write down the answer. On the other hand, Close ended questions are the questions in which options or answers are given or enumerated. The respondents simply check or encircle his or her desired 
answer. It is easy to answer, easy to analyze, objectivity is very high and there is no subjectivity or very low subjectivity. Here is an example of close ended question. Encircle the number of the best answer given below, strongly agree, agree, not agree, disagree, strongly disagree. There are five options in which the person who gives response or respondent should encircle any one from these five options, where questions are English should be used as a medium of instruction in all subjects. So, the respondent if he is strongly agree with this uh, statement, he or she will encircle the answer number 1. This type of uh, question set is known as 5 point Likert scale. If we remove the uh, middle one, that will be a 4 point Likert scale in which we push the respondent to answer in agree side or disagree side. This is all about uh, data. Now, let us discuss about variable. Variable is a characteristic of a person, object or phenomenon that can take different values. For example, sex, age, educational status, income, parity, these are the uh, variables against a person. These are probable variables against a person. There are many types of variables. For research purpose, we can classify variables in three types. These are independent variable, dependent variable and confounding. For research purpose, we consider these three types of variables. For example, if we consider a research in which we are looking for the association between smoking and cancer, here smoking causes cancer in this statement we should justify or testify this. Here independent variable is smoking, because smoking de smoking does not depend on the other variable. Cancer is the other variable which depends on smoking. So, smoking is independent and cancer is dependent, because cancer depends on smoking. So, the variable which influences on the other one is independent and the variable which is influenced is dependent variable. And confounding is another variable which influences on both independent and dependent variable. In this example, age may be a confounding because age influences both on smoking and on cancer. According to nature, we can classify variables into two groups. One is qualitative variable and another is quantitative variables. Qualitative variables are outcomes that is narratives. These variables take non-numeric narrative values. Example is occupation, nationality, sex, etcetera. And quantitative variables are numerical like height, weight, income, parity, etcetera. There are two natures of variables. One is discrete and another is continuous. Discrete is whole number. There is no fraction possible. For example, family size, 
number of beds in a hospital, number of doctors in a hospital, number of nurses in a, in a hospital. These numbers cannot be fractioned. There is no fraction possible. These types of numeric variables are discrete variables. On the other hand, there are some numeric variables where fractions or unlimited fractions is possible. These are age, height, weight, income, etcetera. Qualitative variables are always discrete, but quantitative variables may be discrete or continuous. Parity is discrete, income is continuous. Fraction is not possible in parity, but possible in income. Now, let us discuss about scales of measurements of variables. There are four scales, nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale and ratio scale. Nominal scales are the scale where all variables carry equal values. This scale measures qualitative variables which cannot be arranged in any definite order like marital status, occupation, sex, etcetera. There is no order. We cannot arrange this in top to bottom order. So, these are nominal scale variables. On the other hand, there are ordinal scale. Here, the data can be arranged in ascending or descending order like educational status, economic status, level of dehydration. This can be arranged in top to bottom order. So, this is ordinal scale. Quantitative or numerical variables are always ordinal, but qualitative variables may be nominal or may be ordinal. Another scale is interval scale. In this type of variables, 0 is not true or not real in temperature or pressure. If we say temperature is 0 degree Celsius, there it does not mean that there is no temperature. If we say 0 pressure, it does not mean there is no pressure. So, this scale measures uh, here 0 is not true. Examples are temperature and pressure. In ratio scale, the 0 is true like height, weight, income. If we say income is 0, that means that person does not earn anything. So, the 0 is meaningful. So, this is a ratio scale. This is all about variables. So, this is my first lecture on biostatistics. Thank you dear students for watching. Our next lecture will be on data presentation. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.